Hi everybody, sending you very best wishes from London town. I hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy during this time. I thought it'd be a good idea to take the time and show you how I use Staffpad as part of my writing and composition process. So this evening I'm going to write a piece of music from scratch in real time. Uh, so let's grab a glass of wine and let's get started. So I'm going to start a new score in Staffpad and I'm actually going to add a piano. For me, the most important part of starting a composition is having an idea or a concept of what I want the piece of music to be and what I want the listener to feel when they hear it. For me, often noodling around or just improvising or just hoping for the best doesn't often work out that well. So I prefer to come up with a concept and an idea and then I know exactly what I'm trying to achieve. It helps me keep the piece focused and it sounds less confused when I finished it. Uh, so today, I'm going to write a big sassy kind of James Bond kind of theme that makes people feel confident and cool when they listen to it because I think we all need a little bit of that right now. So one thing that really helps me is actually just to sort of kind of just sing along in my mind, just hear it in my head and then try and get it out in a graphic style. So I'm actually going to use this uh, markup layer which is this little scribble icon here and um, you know I'm just going to start scribbling in sort of a graphic notation way what I'm what I'm aiming for and what I'm hearing in my head. So straight off the bat, I'm hearing a sort of uh, a nice big run up and it's sort of like dum dum ba dum, those kind of like dum dum ba dum, those kind of big James Bond uh, sort of stabs. And in fact, bum uh, dum bum room. Yeah, uh, bum bum run Bum, 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 and then like a ba 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 ba, da 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 da, yeah da 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 da. So like just like a a quick sort of quaver thing. Ba da da dum. I know that doesn't look like anything right now, but this kind of makes sense to me, and I feel like the strings will. Really we just have like a really high note. Yeah, in fact, let's hold the strings on even longer. And then we have like a nice. Okay, so that's our kind of like main a sort of intro riff. And I want that to be really big, really loud, really sort of hit you in the face, just like this kind of classic Bond things uh, did. Um, and then I think we need some contrast. We need some really light contrast. So maybe we go uh, to a much more delicate, uh, rep, sort of repeated ostinato thing, like a bum 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 bum. Yeah, like a bum 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 bum. In fact, this can just be a repeat. So it's going to be like that kind of pattern. And I think we can just set that up. And so we've got this nice sort of high texture. I feel like this should be quite high up, maybe doubled in octaves. And a soft sound, sort of a soft ostinato. And as we go through, we probably then want to bring in some nice low end. That can kind of keep going in the, that kind of two bar pattern, but we probably want to have like a nice bit of low end coming in here. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom. And then another hard stop. Yeah, cool. And then we might want to go back into the intro riff. Do you know what? Actually, let's let's have a little fake chorus. I feel that's going to just throw us off. Again, with that light and shade, it can really help. And it's, we're going to feel like it's going to go into something big, but it doesn't. Let's go right back down to like a piano, like a very like a soft kind of thing and then we can really so that's going to be a big crescendo 
and then we can really just like sort of really hit with the chorus. So this will be the big chorus. Uh, I don't want to. I don't really know what that sounds like yet. Um, dun 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 dun. Okay, so let's get some kind of instruments in. I know that we want. Let's just add a bass for now. And let's get the bomb bomb because I can hear them very clearly. Uh, so, you know, lowest with the C extension, the basses can go right down to a low C. But let's just start off with uh, with that in mind. And probably want it to be staccato and loud. Let's get a tempo. Right, so um, bum, bum, bum. It's much faster. I'm, do, I'm doing this in double time, but it needs to be much faster. Uh, let's try 170. Get the click on. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. So I'm going to paste this now. The way I'm doing that is I'm double tapping a bar, and I'm using my three fingers to sort of scoop up the bar, sort of pinch, and then I can double tap where I want to put it, and I spread my three fingers out to paste. Obviously we don't need the repeated forte marks. Let's put these in octaves. And again, I'll just scoop that up. It saves me having to rewrite it each time. Now the, the wow, that's got to be trombones or horns or something. So let's add some nice big French horns from Cinebrass. Uh, and I'll place that underneath my sketch piano, which I keep at the top. Boom, 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 wow. So that's going to go over to the... Um, to that, and we'll probably want to put like a rip on it, like a scoop. So put a scoop on that, just flick up. Yeah. Okay. What did I have here? Oh yeah, like a... So let's draw this up in the piano. It's going to be some kind of quick sort of quaver. We're obviously in C minor here. Bum bum because I'm hearing it needs to be sort of badass. Let's change the key signature. I'm going to long touch at the start. Press change key signature. Go to minor. We're going to find C minor. Um, yeah, and we'll just keep going. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, and we'll make that staccato. note head. Uh, it's a real small dot just for the staccato dots. I'm just tapping on the note head there to, to preview the pitch. So let's paste that down into the basses as well. Okay. But we need a bit of variation in this uh, horn line because it can't just rip up. I don't think it needs to have some kind of some kind of melody phrase or, or shape to it. So, uh, what about if we actually? Uh, yeah, that's much more kind of Bond, isn't it? Uh, 
Um, we want it to actually want it to hold over, don't we? So like that. Yeah, and this is going to be loud. Perfect. So that we want to make that. Uh, yeah. And then we copy the. triple, uh, sorry, double F, rather than just forte, so I'll just tap on the F, uh, tap double F, and that should give us a bit of a nicer, bigger sound. Uh, cool, okay, so then then we need to come up with like a little ostinato. Um, I'm gonna add another piano, maybe just a single staff. Uh, actually, no, we'll add a full piano, and again, I'll place it just below the sketch. Uh, let's work out some of these chords, but also this little ostinato at some point. So this is going to be another... Um, something like that. We'll strike that section out as a double bar line as well. Double bar lines are really useful for me anyway to just divide into sections. Um, and then we wanted that to just keep going, didn't we, for a bit? So let's just push that down as a bar repeat. Um, it's going to repeat all the way down here. But so to do a bar repeat, I'm going to tap in each bar. But I'm, because I want it to repeat two bars, I'm going to tap and then pull down like that. And then I think it's gonna sort of come to an end there, but we'll, we'll we'll look at that in a minute. Ah, uh, cool. So with that D in there, I think we want dum bum ba dum. It wants to be like an A flat over C kind of thing. Um. So let's look at maybe a piano chord that sits sits sort of with, within the two worlds. So let's copy the bass, bass up into the piano. And then we want it to hit with the with the horns. So we've got the horns are doing that. Uh, but we could just probably Let's just build up this chord actually, so it's a bit more. I can lasso uh, a selection. If you don't want to write the chord out again to tie it over, you can you can uh, lasso it. Um, but actually, thinking about it, we we do we want. Yeah, uh, and then it could go to a bit more of a standard. Yeah, we hold that and just move like the C down to the B flat. Yeah. Okay. Let's copy that again. I wonder what happens if we even keep the A, the A in. Yeah, it's nicer. Okay, one more time. All right, and then we're going to come off for the for the big sort of riff. 
Okay, and then... Um... Okay, let's make that a bit more interesting. Um... But first, I want to just map out the... Yeah. And then Yeah, except it's contrast, so we want that to be uh, much softer. Like an A, like a like an A flat bass. And move that up. And again, just repeat that. So we go up to like a like a G major type thing. Uh, so that's not going to be a repeat. Um, first bar can be, but then when we're going to go, we're going to go into the G major. So we're going to go up with like a. Uh, up to maybe a B. Okay, so. Yeah. And um, of course, that's going to be a sort of crescendo. Yeah, and then we can repeat into, into that same thing again. So we're just We feel like it's going somewhere, we false pretense it, but we're going to get louder and louder. Um, different colour, like, so we'll make this a different colour, like a softer, like a vibes or something. For me, I like to think about the orchestrational colours whilst I'm writing. Uh, although you could think of this as a separate process, for me it helps to think of it all in one go. It helps the listener to stay engaged and for the piece to be less boring if we use the entire range of the orchestra. So rather than have long sections where it's just strings or long sections where it's just brass, maybe we want to look at moving those around so that there's not one section that's got too much time on its own at any one point. So, I still don't know what the chorus sounds like yet, but let's kind of build up the intro and the verse um, so that we can get a bit of inspiration. So let's add some more strings. I can. I know we're going to start with a really big sort of string run up. I'm going to flip the basses to the uh, Berlin strings. I quite like the Berlin strings for this stuff. They've got a very sort of lush sound, um, and we can see. So we've got the held note at the top. So let's start with a sort of basic um, uh, sort of C minor scale. Um, remember you can always expand the bar to give yourself some more space to work in. And um, we're going to go up to C at the top there. And hold this over, right? We're just going to hold that. We could do the same again, but let's, no, let's go down actually. 
um, do like a, oh, like a really James Bond. If we go sort of down from here, give myself some more space. Um, sorry, I've messed that up. Uh, a, A, A flat, G, F, uh, sorry, that's what, <laughs> all that time, that's what I was thinking about. And then this, we can make this a trill, um, like a, like a semi like a, yeah. And actually, we probably want to keep that over for two bars. Uh, yeah, we probably do want to keep that over for two bars. Let's redraw that trill. You drag the trill note, by the way, to change between a semitone and a half tone. So if I drag up and down on this little trill note, it changes between a, a sort of major trill and a minor trill. Okay. Yeah, you can see where we're going with this. So let's give that loads more drama, actually. Let's give it a bit of time as well to cut itself off. So we, we're gonna shorten that down. Let's bring this down to double it in the second violins. And actually for the first violins, we're gonna put that, we're gonna push that all the way up to the top. It's gonna be huge. Um, nice, and we want that to be sort of as loud as possible, really. Now you can actually lasso dynamics, so instead of having to write them all the time, you can just, um, you can just lasso them, it saves a bit of time. Now, for the violas, I think the cellos, we probably wanna just have doing the, we want maximum bass, so I think we'll probably uh, copy these up into the cellos too, and their low C sort of extension will let them do that. And then we probably wanna hit the violas pretty much with that, with those chords to fill out that mid range, but maybe we drop it an octave. And actually there's no need for it to change note there, looking at it. I don't think we need to change the note. Let's just keep it. And we'll put a tremolo on that. And an accent. Actually, we want it to, yeah, so let's also make that an FP going up to a uh, sort of up to an F. Yeah. And actually, we're going to copy that over a few times. So, When you draw an FP, you'll notice in the expression layer, it actually, it does respond to it, but you need to give it enough space for it to do the curve. So now you'll see we've got a nice curve going up to, going up to the next dynamics. You'll also need to give it a dynamic to go to, otherwise obviously it's just gonna be an FP, uh, which is just a forte piano. So it's gonna suddenly go down to piano, but because we want it to come back up again, we wanna give it that, we wanna give it that target dynamic. And actually, thinking about it, I don't want to do that because I'm going to put this everywhere. We're going to make this, drop this an octave and in the bases too. And actually, thinking about it, let's put this up, uh, up here and we're going to, Going to actually make this, this is going to be a strong F. Um, let's put this in octaves as well. So there's a good way of doing this, a really quick way of doing this. I'm going to lasso the, the, the top octave here. I'm going to switch voices into voice two and paste that in. Now you can see it looks a bit of a mess. Uh, because the voice assignments are wrong. So I'm going to double tap, I'm going to swap the stems and uh, again, lasso 
We don't want it all the way up there. And then I can bring down just voice one. So, let's have a listen. Great. Um, now, again, that kind of ostinato thing, I think we do want a softer sound, like maybe a, um, maybe a Celeste. Let's add one of these in. Pop this above the, uh, above the strings. Oh, sorry, being a little bit clumsy here. So let's bring this down. Out of the piano and into the Celeste. You'll notice, by the way, it doesn't bring the repeats down. But it's okay, we can easily rebuild those. Yep. And I guess we can remove them from the piano. Okay, I'm just pushing a little harder with my pencil to get to the eraser. Nice. I think this would sound nicer doubled like an octave lower. And actually it might be easier to read if we switch the Celeste to being two treble clefts, so one for each hand. Um, Okay, I'll just draw in the repeats. And the same for this. Just bring this down an octave. Okay. Now, in the bass, we had that, that sort of rising bass line up from the A flat. Uh, so let's, again, let's bring that down from the There we go. Oh, and this would would want this to be a much um, softer, possibly not that low as well. Oh, still got my repeat sign. Let's get rid of the palette. Make that an MP. Uh, now I had a little melody here. How did that go? A good tip is actually to collect melody fragments or ideas that you're working on and paste them into the Notes app. You can just double tap a bar, single tap to expand or contract that selection, press the copy icon in the toolbar that rolls over, and then you can paste that straight into the Notes app or another word processing app or something. And that's a really good way of collecting ideas that you might not want to use right there and then, but store for later. I actually have a Notes full of different melodic fragments and ideas that I can quickly use later on. that out. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And actually, we can let's do something. Let's do something quite nice here. Let's uh, split the let's split the violins, so we get that nice. Uh, and then maybe we could do boom boom, and that's going to be a a natural. I often find it's really useful to work in several passes. So the recognition engine works on stroke analysis. It doesn't actually pay much attention to the way that the bar looks visually. So make sure that you clean up any unintentional mistakes or ink strokes that are in the bar. Otherwise the app will leave it pending. You'll see the bar go orange. And that actually means not that the app hasn't recognized the notation necessarily, but that it thinks there's things in the bar that you wouldn't want it to recognize, that you wouldn't want it to force into typeset notation. This could be symbols or arrows or notes to yourself. The whole app is designed to keep you composing forward uh, rather than kind of break the flow and block you from going on to the next bar. So I'll often write notes and rests and then I'll go in afterwards and do accidentals, or dynamics, articulations, text, those kind of things. But for me the most important thing is to get that melody down, the way that I hear it in my mind. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So... Yeah. Woods? Yeah. yeah, that's probably quite nice. Nice. Right, let's have a look at the chorus then. So, Again, I'm going to my markup layer. And I think we probably want, we want to hit with a big, big sort of bump. Yeah, that kind of swagger. Bump, 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 that's it. That's another bump. Bump, dump, dum. Yeah, that's like a, just a repeat. Um, so that's probably going to be... Yeah, let's put let's put let's just put that menacing bass bum bum. Yeah. And we do want it to be an octaves actually. And thinking about it, let's do it slightly differently. Dum bum. Yeah, but even lower. And even shorter. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 ba boom, ba Okay, so we're gonna go down. I think that means probably what we'll do is, let's just hit some chords, so, we're going to start with an A and then move down um, And we're just going to move this down each time, I think. Uh, actually, go to a G minor. F minor. Yeah. 
So that would just be a da -da -da -da. dead simple. Repeat. Actually, that might be quite nice to go up if we're doing that as a. Okay. So we could have like the woodwinds and maybe the trumpets or something. Okay. And then let's not repeat it. Yeah, it's a bit more James Bondy, isn't it? So that little flick, but um, what's that going to be? Like a CD? Probably. Ah, uh, no. It shouldn't be, it should be. Bum, 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 there. And then move it down. Uh, so let's start it higher. Bum, 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 bum. And then we step this down each time. So we can give each, we can give the violins their own little sort of stab. That's sort of C minor moving to a sort of G minor. Again, we want like an F minor. And then we repeat that. So in the bass, what have we got? Just stepping down. So let's give it a bit more sort of rhythmic interest. I think is what I had in the kind of bump, 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 bump. Yeah. Insert an F. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh yeah, dun dun dun. Dun. Is that what we had? Yeah, up on that sort of G7. Don't Yeah, cool. Let's 
make that even louder by putting it in the cellos as well. Actually, do you know what? No, let's not. Let's put this in. Let's just make this octaves. Fight with this a little bit. Dun, dun, ba, na, na. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, cool. Let's copy that over. And I'm gonna put, we're gonna leave that free for a melody. I think there's gonna be a melody there. But we do want a kind of jangly dum bum bum something to give it the pulse. So let's just stick in the chords now, just roughly in the violas. Do we want them to all be the same? Yes, I think we do. And a staccato to give it that kind of bum bum bum. Just mark the time. And this is just going to step down, I think. But of course, we'll need to just naturalize. Uh, I think it'll help if we push this up one of the inversions. I guess we just repeat that now. We can always come back later and look at that. Uh, and again, we want that to be quite loud. We want it all to be pretty loud, actually. It's the chorus, it's big. Okay. And then I think bum 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 dun 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 oh bum 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 back to the beginning intro riff takes us up to the end of forty five and then what we go to verse two um yeah verse two so that's gonna dun to dun I'm a bar out. Ah, let's have a little bit of a silent. Let's have a couple of bars of fake, like a rest bar, like a boom, like a little tremolo, and then we're into verse two. Let's work on. So I'm going to change that bar line so we know where we are with that. Change bar line, double bar line, and. I'll just copy over the piano part. I'm not gonna copy over the whole thing right now because uh, we'll probably wait until we've fleshed it out a bit more. But we do wanna rest there, so we're just like a little, what's that, three bars, a little tremolo. Probably a tremolo on like a, on a high C, on a high C. Tie that over. Tremolo. Yeah, like that, it's like a little accent on it. It might be cool actually not to uh, not to have it so straight. That's a very straight. Let's give it like a little bit of um, maybe give it a little bit of like a crunchy kind of feeling. So if we do something like that.
yeah, but obviously make it really quiet. Um, Cool. And then we're into verse two, so let me change that bar line. Nice. So, that's a good little hook. Um, we should make the most of that, actually. Uh, in fact, I think we might have more or less all of the hooks. We're going to need some variations and stuff. But the trick with these kind of songs is not to have too many ideas, and not to have too many um, complicated sort of interweaving parts, just to have big, strong melodies that everyone can recognize and hear and go, oh, I know what that is. Um, so, verse two, I think we're probably going to do another... Uh, you know, back to our main riff, but maybe the, sorry, not our main riff, but our ostinato, but maybe in low strings. So instead of having that soft kind of thing, we'd put this, we'd put this down in the cellos and stuff. Sort of like that have them really kind of like soaring away. I think that'd be quite cool. Actually, maybe not, maybe we want just a solid dump bump, but these should be soaring away down there. And maybe we just want a solid, you know, pit, sort of solid pizzicato sort of, yeah, just marking the beat. put these in octaves. That's okay. And this, these will be staccato. Now you can actually just type stack. If you don't want to do the staccato dots, uh, which you don't want to if it's a long, if you're going to do it for a while, you can actually just type in stack and it will, it'll do that for you. Um, uh, Yeah. We'll expect that to probably carry on for a bit. I'm not going to use the repeat sign there because we might want to add some variation. And obviously if you use a repeat sign, you're kind of stuck in, in, in the sense of you've got to use that. Um, got to use that figure. Okay, so then we'll probably move ourselves back into that kind of lush. Thing that we had here. So I'm going to copy that over. I guess we could keep this, uh, probably keep this going. Of course, we'll need the uh, Nice. Right, uh, after that we're going to hit the chorus again, I think. Oh wait, did we have... Hmm. Yeah, let's just hit the chorus again. So that's going to be the chorus. We want this to be lush. Build chorus. Um, double chorus. 
times two. So it's going to take us to One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to take us to bum, 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 ba, dum. repeat that. It's going to take us to 79, I think. Maybe 78. Uh, we can always change that later. Uh, and then we're going to want to, we want like a mid eight here. Um, uh, I think I can hear like a really like just a descending line, sort of just going down, maybe just marked, just, just descending. Bum. Slower than that, though. So, like, ba -da 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 -da. Mm. Mm -hmm. just keep going. Maybe, yeah, and then repeat that. Da -da -da. Bump, 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 bump. Keep these really strong fours. Just four on the floor. Pulse. Descending. Like Mercatos. And then I think we want to have some big stabs, like a like stabs. Da -da 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 that kind of thing. But maybe da -da 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 -da. breathe. Okay, let me have it. Nice. And then we're going to have probably choruses out. So now that we've got the main body of the composition in, let's look at some orchestration, fill in some detail there. We're going to add some woodwinds, I don't know, I think maybe a clarinet. Oboe, a couple of flutes, maybe a bass, bass clarinet, a bassoon and a contrabassoon. And... And we can have them, we can have them running up actually as well to fill this kind of... Let's do the same thing, but let's have it going up from, say from a B flat, Just pull the bar line, the bar line out to the right. By the way, if you need more space. Uh, we're gonna have one. I'm just working through this in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Let's copy this this out. And we'll paste this into the flutes as well. And I mean, why not? Let's go to the clarinets as well. But let's push this up an octave. Yeah. Although these feel like we could do with a little bit more time on them, so. Let's make these dotted. Okay. And those big, bad bass uh, notes. The thing about orchestration, especially when you're getting into orchestrating for this style, uh, is a lot of it is to do with colors. Um, and you don't need a huge number of ideas, as long as you can um, we don't want these to be an octave, sorry. Oh, 
Last one. As long as you have uh, a solid couple of ideas, it's it's good to generally aim for about. Um, I'm going to change this to base clef just because I, I find it easier to work with that. Um, it's good to have like maybe no more than five things going on at once. Uh, you know, really you want to be aiming for two or three really a sort of strong melody, a strong chord, and maybe a counter counter melody. Um, more than that, and things start to get a bit confusing for the for the listener. You'll find even in the most complex orchestrations and the complex pieces of music that you can find, there's still a couple of threads of, of very strong ideas, of strong melodies. And the great thing about melodies is to make them strong, you keep them simple and repeat them a lot. So all in all, it's not, it's not a huge task once you've written the basic skeleton like you saw uh, to then come up with you know, the main orchestration of it. Uh, it's just keeping in mind colors, it's keeping in, in mind textures, it's keeping in mind the shape of, of what you're doing. And that's something that's very hard to describe. It's something you've got to keep in your mind at all times whilst you're thinking about the kind of the, the orchestrations that you're doing. We're going to add some more instruments here whilst it's in my mind. So let's add, uh, let's add some more French horns. I'm going, to mix, I'm going to mix and match actually. So let me mix some of the Berlin brass, we've got some extra horns, we're going to get some uh, some of the trumpets, the cine brass trumpets are really good, they're really sort of blaring, so uh, let's add a couple of those, uh, trombone, bass trombone, uh, tuba, great, I don't think, I don't really need my sketch anymore, I don't think, I'll leave it around just for now anyway. And we can start to restructure this stuff by the way. So let's bring up our French horns up to the top here to join, join his friends. And you know, it'd be quite, quite nice as if we we filled out that chord um, so that kind of a flat chord that we have sort of like an a flat add four I'm gonna pick that up um, and bring bring that over so that we've got these horns screaming out It's interesting, we might not need them to do this, but but let's see where we get to. So I'm gonna put this onto an A flat, and then this bottom one's gonna go onto an E flat. Beg your pardon, there we go. And they're all going to be uh, double F. And then we want the trumpets to do the same as that top horn. So we're really going to scream out. In fact, we probably want the trumpets, all three of the trumpets, to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that does it. And again, these these low low notes let's put them down onto the uh, trombone, the bass trombone, and the tuba. It's a bit too low for bass trombone at that point, though. Uh, and in fact, in the spirit of what I was saying about only having a few ideas. Let's really hammer this home. Uh, in the
the brass like that. Okay, cool. Let's make these even louder though. And in fact, probably this one as well. And let's start to add some stuff. So let's go to maybe the Spitfire sort of. Um, they have really good timpani. Not that I can find it. Let me search for it. Timpani. Great, and we got we want that kind of classic sort of Bond thing where it's doom pow dum So put that on like so and again loud. And then the timpani I think we're gonna have we can, oh I tell you what we can have that rolling through. Okay, yeah it's starting to come together. At least in my head, <laughs> a bit of time. A bit of time before it comes together in real life, but you know, it's okay. Uh, yeah, oh, it needs to go somewhere. And I think I need to make this an X. Ah, these are symbols, that's why. I want Piatti. I'm gonna swap that. So you can uh, swap a staff, you don't have to add a new one and then replace it. Yeah, that's better. Um, good. Yeah. Where's my hairpins? I'm going to just do this quickly with the paintbrush. Sometimes the uh, forte dynamic is particularly tricky. If you don't have a if you don't have a rest in the bar. So put a rest in the bar first and then the forte dynamic will recognize much easier because it's got something to latch on to. Um, so my piano is really loud. Uh, I'll just take it and take that down a bit. I'm gonna try maybe the Berlin piano as well because that the stock piano is great, but the Berlin piano has a bit more sort of oomph to it because um, it's a Steinway D, so it's massive. Uh, we take that down a little bit because it's loud. Yeah, and I know what we can do here as well. We can move this down even further to make it super low. to be putting phrasing in but just to remind me of the sort of shape of that let me just draw those phrases in um, nice now the other thing I'm hearing throughout this whole piece actually is is drums so let's add let's add a drum kit we've there's a couple but let's just add the basic one yeah 
So drums, you have to write in two voices at least uh, to get your stems up and stems down. Uh, so let's think about the snare first and the kick. So that's going to be dum ba ba dum 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 ba dum. So. Um, And then when we put voice one in, and we do want this to be loud as well, set text. Oh, it's gone up the top. We'll draw it. times two really or even times three yeah so we, let's just highlight that so let's um, all on the ride symbol and then and then And we will pull that in to like a really, a really loud kind of thing. Okay. Nice. Uh, let's just make it so it's not quite a straight repeat. Okay, let's see what happens if we swing this. Because I kind of, I hear it with the swings. So let's see what happens. Okay, then we need to go back to straight for this bit. So I'm gonna just type straight. Okay, cool. I've also just noticed that my microphone's a little hot, so let me just turn that down a little bit. Okay, so let's, let's pull in some of these strings. So let's, um, Pull that in the in the violas for now. Actually, no, let's move it into the cellos. And we can put along with the basses. Yeah. But actually, do you know what? Let's put this in thirds, actually. That'd be nicer. They'll feel much more lush. Like cellos and basses work really well when they're in thirds. Um, obviously because they've got that sp octave split. I don't know, it's still, it does still need a little bit of pulling up though. So maybe we'll 
double this under. Uh, like that. It's also a bit strong. Just take out the guide piano as well. So let's keep it going up. So it's just rising up. So I'm imagining that there's a, a second line as well. Uh, actually, we'd want that to be. Okay, and let's push this down an octave to give it some extra weight. And we'll complete that lower, lower voice. How's that? Yeah, cool. So then we can bring in the seconds just to fill in some of that middle, uh, some of that middle line. Probably here though, so it's... Oh. push all of these in with hairpins. Which we do want to go to the third beat. Uh, that would also be an MP. Right. Nice, uh, I like that kind of major seven that, that kicks in uh, at, 20, at 22. Uh, let's step this down actually as well, so that it feels a bit more like it's boom. It's missing, it's missing some kind of pulse, this bit. Like, it's a bit... Just a bit dull. Pum, pum. Let's do it like a woodwind. Pum, pum. Yeah, like a little woodwind thing. Just doing... Um, Just doing a chord like that. Doesn't like my MP today. Yeah, just like a really, just put a tenuto on that. Yeah, and I think it can just, just pulse along. Yeah. 
and then we'll need to step up with the G major. Actually, do we want that to be above it? So here's a handy trick. I can double tap, I can press swap voices, and that'll flip them around. Yeah, and then uh, this thing here, rather than it being on the piano, we do want to put this on woodwinds. So maybe we put it on like bassoons. I think that would be a really cool texture. Um, but yeah, let's make them staccato. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna do that just because it means that uh, what we can do is we can sort of demonstrate which ones we want to be bassoon one and which ones we want to be bassoon two by adding in And also let's change this to a treble clef, it's a bit easier to read. Yeah, cool. I think we'll probably do the same thing on the clarinets and just sort of start to build up the scale. Let's add that uh, flute in and then also um, push that up an octave. I don't think we need that to be separate voices. So yeah, good. Nice. Make sure these are all kind of roughly the right dynamics. We'll do a separate pass with dynamics as well uh, later on, but um, for now I'll just go through and add them. Great. Now, as I said, as core is big, this needs to be, this needs to be big. Um, let's have a little lead in though, like maybe a, like a tremolo in. A little sort of little accent on that. Cool, we just want to make that bigger. All right. Um, right, let's look at this chorus. Dun, dun, let's just remind myself of it. Dun, dun, oh yeah, okay. Well, we don't want that for a start. Maybe we should have that melody uh, completely on its own. It's kind of cool, it's kind of badass. Um, yeah, let's do that. And... Yeah, let's start putting this bass line everywhere. So I think... T 
to be honest, we probably don't want it in octaves. No, we don't. Uh, what we want is, we'll just pull these off. Cause it's going to get too low for the bass trombone otherwise. So I'm working quite zoomed out here. But we can afford to take that and push that down an octave for the tuba. Yeah. Okay, and let's take these and pop them in the trumpets to give you that kind of pop, but um, but again, it's too high, so. I'm actually going to push this down an octave using the transpose uh, box this time. Okay, so I think we can add a bit more rhythm. Uh, into this, so let's bum, bum. like that. I'm also going to write this out for the three trumpets just because we can. Uh, I I think what we probably want to do is that. Great. Oops, sorry, minimized my screen. Let's do the same there, remove the F because we don't need that. Actually we do, but we just want it to be there instead. And we want to lasso it and put it in all three. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty cool. So up in the woodwinds, I think we can probably do pretty much the same thing with the basses as we did with the um, we want to change that back to bass clef though, of course. And actually that might be too low for them. So they're in unison. Nice. And also with the bass clarinet. Yeah, 
And then with the flutes, I think probably if we have the oboes, maybe we'll do what we were doing with the um, with the violins. So that was uh, actually that. Yeah, nice. And then we just stepped this down, didn't we? Like, like so. And again, we don't need these Fs. So many Fs. <laughs> And actually, let's make that really scream. Let's push this up an octave. I'm going to do this with the transpose command, like that. Same again. And then this is our intro riff. So we're missing some drums, obviously. We need some, some kind of cool, cool drum beat. And we're missing our timps and stuff. So let's put some percussion in. Uh, so we probably want to build up to the chorus itself. Just going to throw in a, a tremolo. And then we can just sort of walk down. Crescendo up to it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Should be an F. Drums, okay, so drums, again, I'm gonna start with the kick. Kick, snare, dun 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 bum 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 Like that. Uh, I just sort of, I'm just gonna make something up here. Dun ba ba da Dun dun. Dun, dun 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 And then we can have this doing a very basic sort of dun bum bum. Put these on the ride actually. It's a little bit stilted, but it's okay. Just repeat that. Um, like that. We probably want that to be a crash. And actually, let's do the same thing here. Let's do the um, 
swing swing thing, as it were. I think that'll give it a nice swagger. Yeah, and it sets us up nicely for the intro riff at the end. Great. I'm gonna paste that around actually, paste that sort of everywhere. I think we need to reinforce that riff actually, that, that melody line coming down. So let's put in, uh, let's put in Spitfire xylophone and actually the Cine Perk vibraphone because that's quite cool, the vibraphone. There we go. And then those little melodies that we have there, we can put them sort of around on the vibraphone as well. So let's copy over some of this beginning stuff into our intro riff again. We're going to need to take a bar out of that, aren't we, actually, because, yeah, I see. Okay, I know what to do. I'm going to pull this out and we're going to just add one of these. Like that. And then we delete one of these. And then, yeah, I think we can just pull that all back one. Sorted. Uh, let's pull the... Um, pull the violas out too. Yeah, and in fact, thinking about it, I can actually pull across the whole like everything. Pull thing out. straight there. I might just flip around some of the drum parts a little bit now. I've heard it with the swing. We can use like a nice open hi-hat there actually. We'll keep that pattern going.
Right, and then we had this little rest, this kind of like... <laughs> Ding! Let's put a little triangle in there. Yeah, cool. I think we're going to double that melody, uh, just sort of thinking about making that melody a bit stronger. Let's put that on the bassoon as well. And actually that means we'd probably want the uh, cleft to come back sort of out there. It's nice. It's not what I had in mind, but it's nice. Finish the phrase. Yeah, cool. Let's put that under a hairpin. Bam, 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 bam. Right, let's just mark the time with the drums as well during this bit. That's good. Okay, what did we want after that now? We wanted a verse two, low strings. Oh yeah, well let's fill out this bit, so this is nice and easy. We'll push this down an octave. And we want to we want to make sure that all comes off at the same time, so let's just push that up. Uh, oh, do you know what, actually, I think we probably want to 
like that. Keep it exactly the same. Uh, okay, and let's fill in some lower harmony. I think we're probably going to give more to the woodwinds here um, as we, you know, talk about things that are good ways of sort of introducing texture. So let's add, let's add our sort of thirds. Oh, do be careful with that when you're actually doing these things. Sometimes you get a slur if you're tying notes of two pitches that aren't equal. So make sure that you've got, in this case, you know, we wanted a G to a G, and it gave me. A, some point it gave me a G to an A flat there. So it drew a slur instead of a tie. So make sure that you've got slurs between the notes. Uh, so make sure you've got the notes the same pitch before you draw a line between them. Uh, okay. I forget that needs to be a natural. Ah, and also because we've written stack here, we need to reset this by writing ord for ordinaire, or you could write normale. So let's give, give ourselves that uh, that figure, let's put that up in the Celeste as well. But much quieter. Mm. And actually, do you know what? When we're doing this at the end of the... Let's have a Celeste line that's going up. Just going up the scale. in both octaves. Nice. And let's even reinforce that a little more. Cool. So let's give ourselves a nice um, spread chord, maybe in the vibraphone as well, to give us a bit more texture. Uh, kind of a that kind of thing, I think. Tie this over. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe sort of resolving out to, uh, should be quite nice over the C minor. Yeah, but it's too low. So let's push that up and split it. So let's put an arpeggio on it. Yeah, cool. Two of those.
Now, do I want that? I should just keep that on the keep that on the vibes. And then this is going to be like a nice sort of sp spread. I love those kind of chords. I'm not entirely sure how you describe them, but they're basically they're basically sort of major seven. But and again, we want to spread that. So let's put that on the horns as well, that be nice on the horns. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was going to be quicker than it was. important to keep the colours going. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, no, let's, let's hint that from where we had before. Trumpets, we can start to build those chords out. We, we haven't really done much in the trumpets yet, so let's look at that. Uh, we're going to pull this into a three part harmony. Let's pull this down. Can we put that down there? It needs, needs to be a D. Pull that down to a G, and then of course, this is going to be a B natural. Gonna start this fairly soft, and again I'm gonna lasso this entire dynamics. <laughs> okay, and 
think we need to do the same same kind of thing in the woodwinds, to be honest. So maybe, so maybe in the bass clarinet we can we can copy the cellos. So it's fifty five bass clarinet paste. Just tidy it up a little bit. And actually, sorry, we've taken the we've taken the cellos, but we wanted to take the bass line. Great, and this then can hint at what the horns do later. Yeah, nice. Ba -da 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 Finish the phrase. I think we're just going to start building up. The clarinets, the clarinets will be good, but we just want to put them an octave lower, I think, just to bulk up. Again, but soon we can. Um, be uh, I, let's put this back into treble clef for a second. This is going to be a sort of G major chord. Uh, it's going to be a B flat, but we need to go to B natural there. Of our D. And actually, let's let's split. Let's let's decide. We've got two clarinets, so let's bring in a bit of harmony here in the clarinets. And again, let's kind of just solidify. So let's bring in the bass here, the tuba. Oh, and actually, we want that to be a dot. Again, like I like the I like low brass when it's 
split quite far. I mean, that kind of triad writing has its place, but I quite like it when it's, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of distance between uh, the trombones. Let's try that. You know what, Let's, for a bit of a modern touch as well, I think I'm going to put in some hand claps. Put some claps here. Um, Cause that can really help it, just, just give it a pulse, but it can really make it sound quite modern. Actually, maybe from here. Oh, so I'm writing absolutely giant. Maybe from here it goes. Sort of, <laughs> sort of starts to build up a bit like a dance track. Some other kind of bass. Uh, let's put the timp. Timp on a tremolo. But quietly. Uh, yep. Push that forward. Great, so now I think we need to just sort of grab the chorus, really. And do a couple of times around the chorus. So I'm gonna copy that. Paste that. Oh yeah, sorry, I wanna go back to bass clef here. Change clef, bass clef. But let's add in, instead of let's keep the piano a bit more relevant um, so, let's have it doing the bass line.
want these to be really staccato. And I guess we want these to be uh, loud as well. So let's add another counterline to that, another melody. One that interweaves and plays a little bit with the, uh, the main melody. Yeah. And again, we want to be working up to this. Give that a nice F2. That needs to actually go down, doesn't it? Like that. Don't forget to finish off that wine. So let's copy this whole thing again. Let's do this because we're doing a X2. But this time, I think we're going to make that piano up the octave. Yep, nice. Yeah, and this, and this brings us to our mid eight. So let's have a think about this mid eight. So we want this kind of descending marcato. Thing. So let's pop a bar line in. Um, so we're going to start off, you know, high. I've just come all the way down, I think. I mean, I think if we just come all the way down, and then we're going to be going G major. I make it really, really strong, so let's push this down an octave. I've accidentally swapped the voice there. And we want it to be marcato. Now again, I'm not going to write the marcato sign. I'm just going to put mark, mark with a C. And copy that down. And then we just bump, 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 pulse, just like a... Which is going to be stack. Yeah.
Actually, let's move this down too. Keep going. Gonna put that that, G, that sort of G major thing in. <laughs> dum, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, cool. Repeat times two. Okay, stabs. Ba bum ba bum ba bum. Let's just do them in the trumpets for that contrast again, that big contrast. Ba -dum. Actually that would be written. Okay, we want to make them definitely double F. Uh, and yeah, okay, let's let's pull the pictures around a little bit. Um, good. Let's go back up into the horns. Just reorchestrate it a little bit, revoice it, I should say. Yeah. And this would definitely have timpani on that as well. Uh, probably bum 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 bum. Uh, probably on a G. Nice. That's cool. And how about we go double time actually in the drums or. Yeah, let's go double time the drums. So, where's my drums? Um, dead simple. Oh, actually, let's, yeah. Crashing.
Great. I'll just vary that up to be a little bit of a four bar pattern. I just remember this should swing, shouldn't it? This should go, go into swing, and then straight. fill in there, I think, don't we? Papa. Yeah. Let's get those uh, bass lines walking down. We don't want that to be marcato, I don't think. We want that to be a bum, 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 bum. Straight down. In fact, maybe we decrescendo on that. I don't know quite know where we're going. Maybe we shouldn't go into a chorus just yet. Da -da 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 -da. From the very beginning. Let's have this in the woodwinds now to give us some uh, to give us some sort of forward motion. Ah, but we, we want it to be a different pattern. Subtly different. And in fact, it's gonna to have to be subtly different again. One in a in a sort of G major fashion. Da -da 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 -da. Great, I think. Yeah, cool. So let's pull that down throughout all of the woodwinds. Uh, 
and let's push that up so we can really hear it. Crikey. Uh, okay, and then uh, we're going to pull the bases out. Exactly as they are, actually, and then we go straight into the bassoons and the bass clarinets. Everything going. Let's copy that. Now, I would normally, if I was orchestrating this a bit slower, <laughs> I'd probably throw that around the section a bit more so that it wasn't so full on for everybody. Um, we've got two flutes again, so you'd maybe you'd have da -da 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 and then turn this into green. So it's sort of flute two, if you see what I mean. Uh, and again with the clarinets. It would, it would help them to breathe. Okay, now. I don't think we want to go for a chorus yet. I know we've been here for a while, but I'm kind of into this now, so I think we want another little tag like a really like let's hit this riff but really really in the basses now we've had it really up high so let's hit this really hard uh in yeah let's pull this pull this into the basses get rid of the slurs Oop, and make sure this is most definitely a stack. Probably even a spick <laughs> for spiccato, which is a quicker, faster bow stroke. Okay, and let's pop this in the left hand of the piano too. but sort of super low down. It's kind of interesting, we can do this. And then uh, lasso, again lasso this one and move it up. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty badass. Maybe we pop that on the uh, xylophone as well. Give it a bit of definition. And... Definitely give it a big drum beat. Give that big open hi hat. Bat. So let's go half time again now in the drums. Uh, just a really big sort of beat. Ah. So we need to finish up here, don't we? Okay, let's um, let's give it the same splits as the horns, but higher.
uh, yeah, and let's give this an FP. Yeah. course. Uh, okay, it's a chorus, a double chorus, so let's copy in... Oh, let's do, do some harp, actually. I don't have any harp yet. Let's add some harp. We can add like a nice, uh, like a run up in this G major bit. Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, all the way down from the bottom. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. <laughs> nice. So let's take it's about as much as we can do. Do the same here, but this goes up. And this is going to go back to the intro riff. big ending on. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, why, why did I do that? I do this in the strings. Normally I do this at a piano, these kind of big chords, but let's do this. Uh, so it's going to go down in thirds, I think. Yeah, let's go down in sort of major thirds. So start with uh, C, we go to A flat, we go to F, we go to uh, D flat, then we go up to B flat, down to G major, and that gets us to where we, you know, we can put our big ending on. Uh, yeah. Put that down there. So let me think about that. So we're going to do um, like 
like this, I think. Uh, F major. Uh, D flat. Um, G minor. G major, okay. B flat G major. Um, again, let's do dum 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 dum, and then we want to have a big better better better. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um, and then we want it to be that kind of ba 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 da ba yum ba ba da ba da ba bum. Okay. Yeah, let's write this out on the piano. It's, it's, um, my brain is starting to starting to go. So we're gonna have big piano chords, C minor. C minor, C minor, A flat, major, yeah, F major, Uh, which means we naturalize that. Uh, B flat, uh, D flat. Yeah. So we want to keep this going down, so that's all the way down there. So let's do the, yeah, so that's gonna be a C minor chord as well. Except, except not that. And then in the bass, yeah, uh, that. 
just lots and lots of accents. Okay. Oh, uh, no. Is that? And actually, let's make this a bit more of a discordant kind of thing. So push that onto a C. Um. Yeah. Great, we've got to have a big timpani smash, haven't we? And the trumpets have got to do the same thing. So let's... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Maybe the drum could precede it. Snare drum. Pa. Yeah. Yeah, and of course the piatti. Okay. On the G major, so let's have the, let's have the timp also. Also tremoling on a, on a, on a G major up to So G major like that, and then, yeah, let's keep going with these massive chords. So, tubers, let's do the brass. It does actually get easier. Okay, so maybe if we do uh, to make the G major.
And then I think we just put this an octave down. Like that. Cool. And let's squish that down and have that on the E. That's sort of classic James Bond kind of chord. Cool. Um, I need to check these. Quite right here. Uh, mm. Possibly. We definitely want all of these to be Mercato. I mean, yeah, definitely. Okay, and also in the woodwinds, I think we also need bigness in the woodwinds, so. Uh, so, up we go. F major to D flat. We can have absolutely everything going full tilt here. Uh, yeah, we do just want that to be. This can just be the same. And that. And that. So I can check a section by just soloing it like this. Uh, it seems pretty good. Okay. Put the 
drums in. I think it's just a lot of that. Here's our final bar line. I can get rid of my my piano guide. I'm going to just rename it so I can find it in the list nice and easily. So my piano guide is gone. Okay, let's have a listen through. Need some brass here. We are missing some brass. So let's let's go in. Now we don't want to keep it too loud for too long, but we do want it to be very loud. So Uh, actually, let's push that up. Push that up there like that. And then in the main trombone as well. I think we probably want to kind of go halfway. So maybe we want to put that sort of there and do fifths. Yeah. We can just hold on a D for this though. Okay. And then, you know, I think maybe for the horns we can do, uh, again, just... Relatively straightforward here. Just keep this going up. And actually we can just keep building this. Just keep building this up. Uh, let's... 
Make sure we give them some breathing space at the end there. Great. Push that up. And again, like the trumpets, we can just start building in. So maybe from uh, where we kick back down 50 to so 88, uh, we start high and higher. <laughs> You can only do this with trumpets for, for very short bursts of time. Otherwise they get um, they get very tired. Let's try something like that. to switch back to swing. And this is the ending, so we'll change the bar line there. And I th think this is good. I, I might, what I might do is just add a few extra little bits in, so Spitfire percussion, uh, tambourine maybe. Uh, there's a tambourine. Mark tree's not a bad idea as well. Just in that, maybe in that double time section. Um, which is like around bar 80. Yeah. do as well is just change say the triangle stuff we haven't really used this for a while maybe give ourselves a little cascading mark tree uh, probably a glist down Great. Now let's also give ourselves a bit more reverb on the drums. Slightly more level. Also give us just a little bit more rhythm here. Uh, I'm going to give us some 
thump, bum, 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 on the drums, just on the toms or something. Uh, um, bum, bum. Just like that. Ooh, and also, let's also add a nice bit of bassy tuba down here. Okay, one of the other things that I want to do is just add some really low end, some nice low end, which you're actually going to get from a synth sound. This is part of the new Ambience One pack. And you can see we've got a category called Wave Shapes there. Uh, and if I add that in, we can, uh, we can see we've got our, our, our um, we can see I've got our patch here. And this gives us a really nice, deep, simple sub, simple sine wave sub. Uh, and so I'm going to have this play more or less what the bass trombone plays. Uh, so I'm going to double tap this, I'm going to single tap the clef, I'm going to press copy on that, and we're going to paste that into the wave shapes um, staff. Probably not that loud, we'll probably go just for a regular forte. But if I solo it, you'll hear what I mean. So we get this... Uh, this really cool, really heavy bass sound. Which is really nice. We don't need so much reverb, I don't think, on that one. Take that right down and uh, unsolo it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some harp glisses. So uh, we can do this across the staff. So I'm going to write a regular sort of two C's like this, get my gliss and just connect them together like that. And then likewise I think we'll probably echo this in reverse so we'll go down from a C there down to probably a G Take my gliss, go down like that. Mm. So, this is already sounding pretty good. Do you know what, actually, we'll do some a little bit of mixing as well. There's quite a lot of reverb on these um, strings. I'm going to take these down a little bit. It's controlled per staff. Down to about there. I'm also going to make the trumpets just slightly, just slightly quieter. Uh, there's not much in it, but we do want maybe just take it down to minus three or so. Just to stop it from overwhelming the mix. And again, we can probably take the reverb down just a little bit. I 
quite like the reverb on the drums. I think I'll probably leave that. Um, oh yeah, and on here, our vibraphone. Let's actually turn on the motor for that. So we've got soft mallets, hard mallets with vibrato and bow. Let's go for with vibrato. I reckon that that'll give us a really nice sound. Let's find some of these chords. Yeah. Yeah, how that gives it. You'll hear. You can hear how it gives us just that little bit of motion in the sound. Okay. What else do we want to do to it? I think we've probably got an opportunity actually to, to make, uh, to give that bass sound a bit more of an outing. Um, for example, it can, it can do the bass line here as well, just, just kind of copy the basses. So press copy, we'll put that onto our synth track. but we'll keep it nice and low, uh, like that. And we can just keep that as a. We actually wanna make sure we cut that bass off there. It should be that. Actually push that slur above. Let's keep things a bit neater. Definitely don't need that note. Great, and again here we probably want to keep this low down. Actually, let's keep this pulsing away on this low bass. It's such a cool sound. Um, so let's just pull this out. And we can, e we can even keep this going on. And then we're back, back up here. So again, we want to make sure that this is down an octave. Octave down. Yeah, great. And actually for this whole section, let's make sure that it Again, just has that really strong pulse. Just copy up from the bases there.
that. Now let's yeah let's let's have it running doing that bass line as well. I'm all over this. Great. We don't need to do that bit. And then from here on out, we just wanted to make sure that it does the octave below. Brilliant. Oh, and probably again, here we probably also want this to be the octave below. Very cool. And actually thinking of ambience one, let's also add one of the sort of reverberant piano sounds from ambient piano. We have that doing that main melody just to make it super, super prominent. Bum, 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 bum. quite a lot of copy and paste here but but it's really good to do so yeah that's looking good we might actually be able to make use of this this really heavy piano um, it's a really nice sound. Let's let's give you a little demo. So it's really reverberant. There's a few different things, a few different types. Maybe let's try raindrops. Very, very reverberant. Actually, I like raindrops. Let's make it an octave higher. I like that. Bass heavy, but it's really pretty cool. Uh, why are we so bass heavy? Oh yeah, okay. So let's just have, th this needs to be way more subtle. We just want it to support the, the basses and the, you know, everything, all the strings can actually be doing that kind of two bar rise and fall figure. So I'll add in some dynamics here just with the hairpin tool. Again, remember to drag up when you want to place a crescendo and down when you want to place a diminuendo. Uh, we just make this all really neat. Do you know the other thing actually?
The other thing we were looking at Let's even push this further by giving ourselves a uh, timpani. And making these, you know, tremolo all the way through. All the way up. And in fact, we can even write uh, poco crescendo like that. Okay. Uh, let me just check the automation layers while well, make sure we're not getting too hot on this base. Uh, ah. Ah. Toggling the automation, toggling the automation layer like that is actually a really good way of um, just checking where you are dynamics wise. It could be easier to see on the graph than it is on the um, uh, we don't need these extra forte signs. Lastly, I'm going to add some rehearsal marks. I find I find them really useful uh, for sort of navigation purposes, but also um, it just makes it easier to kind of get your way around. Uh, so I think obviously the first one we don't really need one at the beginning of the of the score, but let's add um, let's add one there, and then for the chorus there, for the tag, sort of verse two. Chorus again. It's a mid eight thing. Back into the main chorus, and then we've got our I'm gonna put a double bar line here as well. This kind of just indicates the outro, if you will. And then last but not least. You know, a quick tip with the rehearsal marks is that you can actually long touch on them and choose switch rehearsal marks dial and it'll flip between an incrementing number, a bar number, or the letters. I actually prefer the letters, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, right, I think all that's left to do is to give the score a title. Uh, it's just called Untitled Score, so I guess we'll give it a kind of unoriginal name, like No Good, No Good Buys. No good time to die. <laughs> Some, no good and goodbye. I'm sure that's been done before, but it's okay. It's just a demo. And I'll give my composer name. But that wine is definitely kicking in. Okay, let's have a listen through. See what it sounds like.
nice. <laughs> Very James Bond. Okay, I think uh, there's a couple of things just to point out real quick. We can see the, the print of this. And, uh, you know, probably on tabloid because it's a big score. And we might want to actually limit the number of bars per page. So I'm going to turn this down to eight bars. So this way it will render no more than eight bars on each page. And as I scroll through here, I can see it's done a pretty good job of the layout. It's all done for me. One of the great things for me about Star of Bad is that I don't need to worry about the way that the score looks. The formatting is all automatic. And uh, although it might seem limiting when you first start using the app, that you can't manually define page breaks or system breaks uh, or even line breaks, the liberation of actually not having to worry about that is quite remarkable. Uh, so I'm going to take the, that as a PDF. Uh, I'll just simply drop it to my Mac. And um, we're good to go. I think the other thing to just bear in mind is, uh, I'll just show you quickly the master volume and the dynamic compression. So the master volume is a gain staging slider. Basically, it's like turning down all of the individual instrument stabs. It's not a master volume for the app, because that you control that through the volume controls on your iPad or on your Surface. But instead, turning down the master volume will actually lower the input level of every single staff into the audio engine inside the app. So if you're finding that your piece is sounding quite hot, it's peaking quite a lot because you've got lots of instruments at you know, double F or triple F, turning down the master volume just a little bit can be a good way of avoiding any of that digital clipping. Dynamic compression, on the other hand, will apply a sort of increasingly harder compression knee and increase the auto sort of makeup gain that we have inside it. And that actually occurs after the master volume. So these are in gain stage order in the settings. So you could turn down the master volume and turn up the compression and you're feeding that compressor a, sm a less hot signal, um, which means that you know you can even squash that down further and get a very sort of radio ready kind of mix. I like to keep my master volume around 90%. Uh, it just it gives me a bit more headroom and then I turn up the dynamic compression a little bit. Otherwise, you know, you've got such a wide dynamic range available in StuffPad that it can be a little bit extreme, especially when you're listening through tablet speakers. All right, I guess, I guess the last thing to do is to, uh, is to sign it. Okay, and I think that's us just about done. Has to be, because uh, I'm out of wine. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I use Staffpad in my composition process. Please do reach out to us. We're at www.staffpad.net. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me, good night from London. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.